Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's a beautiful day. I would like to share something from the book of Psalm, Psalm 91. It's a very beautiful psalm. But I would just like to share something from verse 1 and verse 2. I will read verse 1 and 2. Psalm 91 verse 1 says like this, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. I know many of you know Psalm 91 by heart and many of you pray this psalm maybe every day and in times like these, in difficult times, in hard times, in times of testing and trials, many of you pray this psalm. But there is much more than just praying this psalm as a ritual. It's important that we know how to pray this psalm or whom are we praying to. So let's closely look at this psalm, especially verse 1 and 2. The psalmist says like this, he says, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Talks about two things. Number one, he says, secret place. And the second thing, he says, abiding. So it's very important that when we have a relationship with God, when we dwell with Him, abide with Him. It's not just once in a while. It's every day that we have a relationship with Him. We spend time with Him. And there are few meanings that we can see in this word dwell in the Bible. It says to remain in Him, to sit down, to stay, to continue, to establish ourselves, and it's a place that we don't just visit. We go to God every day, not only when we have a problem or when we are sick or when we have a trial. It's a daily routine that we spend time with Him. That's what it means to dwell with Him. It's a time where we spend with God a quiet time and we say, God, I thank you, Lord. This is the most important time that I have with you. So the word dwell means to remain with him. That's what the meaning is. Jesus said something like this in John chapter 6 verse 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. Now we see Jesus had a relationship with his father and when he was talking about his flesh, eating his flesh and drinking his blood, he was talking about taking communion, having that covenant relationship with him, dwelling with him every day, saying, God, I thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me. By his wounds, I am healed. I thank you, Lord, that your word is medication to me. And when I sit down, when I meditate your word, it enables me to receive the portion that I need, the strength that I need every day. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. So this word, we see that when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, he is the person who dwells with him and abides in him. And also in John chapter 14, verse 10, Jesus said like this, Believers thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Jesus knew that every day he needed to spend time with his Father. If not, he wouldn't have been able to do what he was doing. He knew that it was the Father who was giving him instructions every day. So he needed to spend time before he could meet the people and minister to them. So that's what he said. 
he said the words i speak unto you it's not of my own self it's a father who speaks to me so he knew that he had a relationship with his father in another place jesus said i and my father are one so he was very bold because he knew he had a continuous relationship with his father so that's what it means to abide with him not just you know when you have a need or a problem just go to god and say god just please help me no it's a continuous thing jesus also said something like this in john chapter 14 and verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but you know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you the holy spirit has been given to us as a comforter he is in us when we don't know how to pray what to pray which way to pray we just say lord holy spirit of god just enable me to pray the will of god I don't know what to do how to pray I don't know the move that I ought to take the decisions that I ought to take or make help me lord so we have the comforter within us we can say lord thank you lord you abide inside of me i know that i have help so that's what it means to dwell or abide with him or dwell with him remain with him and the second word he uses The psalm is uses in Psalm 91 verse 1 it says the first one we saw talks about dwelling in the secret place the second one is abiding the word abiding means to be one with him Jesus mentioned in John's gospel chapter 15 a very close relationship he took an example of a wine tree and a branch he said i am the vine and you are the branches so in this word we can see the word abiding means it's a continual thing it's a habitual thing you are lodging with him that's what it means to abide with him it's a permanent thing in john's gospel chapter 8 verse 35 jesus said like this and the servant abideth not in the house forever but the son abideth forever you and i are sons of the most high god that's why we abide with him we have a relationship with him a living relationship with him because we are the children of the most high god we have believed his name and he has given us the power to become sons of god and those who are led by the spirit of god The Bible says they are the sons of God. So John's Gospel chapter 15, I will read a few scriptures and we see Jesus said, "Abide in me, stay in me, continue in me, and I in you." As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. verse 5 I am the vine you are the branches he that abideth in me and I in him the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me you can do nothing without the help of the lord we can do nothing we are powerless we have no strength we have no ability we cannot do anything that's what jesus said and in verse 6 he says if a man abide not in me He is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. So it's so important to abide with him. He says you can ask whatever you will because he knows that we will not ask the wrong thing. Because when we spend time with him, abide with him we will understand and know the father's heart the heart of the father is always to give good things to us he knows everything that is needful for us the bible all the bible also says that he gives the desires of our heart but there is a condition we ought to abide with him we ought to remain in him spend time with him So he says you ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you. 
So it's important that we spend time with him. John's Gospel, we continue to read in verse chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. When we continue in his love, we begin to understand, you know, God, I know that you love me. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. And I know, Lord, that every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Sometimes when we pray and we don't see the results immediately, our prayers are not answered, we get discouraged. But you know, sometimes we think, God, this is what I need. But God knows at every season, what we need. So at the right time, He brings those things into our lives. So don't be discouraged if you have not received something. You have prayed and you have believed and you are waiting for it. Continually abide with Him. Wait. God is a good God. He has a timing for everything. The Bible also says that, you know, He does everything in a perfect timing. Our times are in His hands. So let's continue to abide with him. In John's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 24, Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. God wants us to bring forth fruit, much fruit and remaining fruit. That's the perfect will of God. That we abide with him and bring forth much fruit. So we can see in Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and verse 23 when we abide with him we begin to bring forth fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, faithfulness, goodness. These are the fruits that we see in our lives. We begin to be just like God the Father. You know there are times that we want to have everything our way and in a hurry we are in a hurry but God says no I'm working a work of grace inside of you so wait wait patiently it's very important for us to abide with him and wait until God works something in our lives and also Jesus said in John's gospel chapter 14 and verse 16 and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever we have the Holy Spirit who speaks to us every day he comforts us and also when we meditate the word of God he reminds us of the words that Jesus has spoken to us so those words are comforting to us so spend time encourage yourself don't be condemned. Don't listen to the voice of the enemy when he says you're good for nothing. Nothing has happened to you. God doesn't love you. No, don't receive those words. Say, God, I thank you that you love me, Lord, with an everlasting love. I thank you, Lord, that I'm a child of God. You have accepted me, Lord. I know, God, that you have a good plan for me, Lord. So it's important to have that perfect peace inside of you. The perfect peace that you have passes all understanding. It will enable you to overcome situations in life. You know, when things around you, are uh, sometimes it's not normal. You think, you know, God, what is happening? God says, I'm just working a work of grace inside of you. Just stand still and see my salvation. Hallelujah. God is a good God. So the psalmist talks about the secret place and abiding, dwelling place and abiding with him. That's what we saw. So it's important that on a daily basis, we spend time with God, abide with him, dwell with him if you want to bring forth fruit. So let me pray with you. I will continue the same psalm in another episode. And right now I want to pray with you. Maybe you are having difficulty, you know, on a daily basis to spend time. Maybe you can start with, you know, 5 minutes, 10 minutes or maybe 15 minutes. And as you continue in the Lord, you will see you will be strengthened. And it's a daily walk. It's a daily walk with Him. 
let me pray with you heavenly father right now i pray in jesus name god we know that you're a good god god your word always encourages us it lifts us up father if somebody who's discouraged this day i pray god that they will make a decision to go into the word dive into the word and spend time with the word taking their bibles and reading and meditating lord not just you know once in a while reading and you know when they are in difficulty but on a daily basis i pray that lord you will encourage them lord help them lord in their weaknesses lord i pray in jesus name that your holy spirit would guide them strengthen them lord and help them lord in jesus name amen